Welcome everybody to Pirate Skills Lead Generation at Scale. Today, we want to see how you can explore your lead generation potential. Essentially, what comes together is what we have worked on in the past half year. Every piece of the last meetups is taking an important part. If you ask yourself the question, how can I scale my lead generation efforts? And even if you are still at the very beginning of this effort, this is like the awesome checklist, in-depth checklist of what you should have set up, what needs to work for you in order to make your lead generation efforts really scale to the maximum that is good and reasonable for you. The main parts that you need to think about how good they really are, like your lead magnet, the value that you're providing uh, to people to build a trust, the general lead gen tool stack, like the landing page, the email capturing, the nurturing, the upselling systems, lead nurturing, the email campaigns that happens afterwards, then how well you can track your leads, what is actually generating costs, what is generating revenue, where do you have a good return of investment, and then of course the ad campaigns or the influencer campaigns and email campaigns that are meant to drive your lead generation. I've seen seriously like the good, the bad, and the ugly of, of lead generation. I've seen projects that um, where I helped the team get up to 2,000 leads collected per day under one euro. And I've seen high ticket B2B lead generation where it was totally fine to have one lead per week because that is all the team could handle. Yeah, as long as it's the quality that actually converts. And if one customer, more than one customer converted per month, they would actually have like an operational problem. So you can suit this to your needs. But as a bit of a warning, like on those two ends, like not having enough leads coming in is a serious problem for your business, but also having too many leads coming into your business if you cannot handle the lead load and cannot properly convert them. This usually just generates costs, frustrated people in the company, frustrated customers. You don't want any of those problems. And today I'm going to give you an overview of what you need in order to do this right. Now, let me ask you a question. How would you rate yourself, your lead generation efforts in those five categories I just mentioned in the beginning? On a scale from one to 10, one being super shitty, 10, we maxed that out, perfect. How well are your lead magnets working? Yeah, how well are your tools doing? How good are your nurturing campaigns that actually turn leads into sales? How can you track your leads, the costs, the revenue, the conversion rates? And how well does the traffic that you're driving there scale? If you got all of them, you can pretty much scale any business based on that. If you're missing one of them or have a serious weakness, today I'm going to give you the input that you hopefully need in order to get better. And of course, I cannot give all the answers, every specific thing, every project is unique. So try to take it as, as input that maybe trigger more concrete, more detailed ideas on your end. As always, we, we share the slides that we have. We uh, put them up on piratesgoods.com, in this case, under slash scale dash lead. And this is where you can just go sign up completely for free, get the recording of this, get the slides. I think today the slides are the most valuable. I don't have another mirror board or anything prepared for you because this is really the, the culmination of all of the boards and tools that we created in, in the past half year. So let's start with the first point, like the key, how valuable is your lead magnet to your audience? How, what are you actually giving people in order to deserve the trust that they give you your contact information, which is what we call lead generation, like give something people value in return, you get their contact information. 
and therefore they become a lead. But if you are not giving them something valuable or not understanding what they what they enjoy or you are having something but showing it to the wrong kind of people, it's not going to be relevant, it's not going to be urgent, they're not going to convert. The first thing you need to get to get this on point is, is your story. If your story doesn't resonate with your customers, you're lost. Like there is the attention is not going to be grabbed. And we have this framework called the content journey map. Let me zoom into the story part. This is where you can see your audience. Like who are you actually helping? Who did you have in mind when your lead magnet, your downloadable PDF, your webinar, your quiz, whatever it is, who specifically did you have in mind? Is this the right kind of customer that you want to attract? And do you understand that problem? Do you really have something that addresses a concrete problem that helps them to get them where they, where they are? Storytelling fundamentally is getting people from where they are and showing them where they can go and helping them to solve their problems with free and paid products until they get there. And this is where you get a good reputation. You need to really clearly understand that. Then, why are you the one who's willing to help? And, and what is the solution you're offering? The micro solution that is your lead magnet, that's a cool infographic, a poster that make people understand the problem and the solution space better. And are you clear on what is the bigger impact, the change you can make? And as long as your lead magnet really hones in and drives that story, you're pretty good. Yeah, There are more parts to the content journey map. And if you want to check it out, um, go to piratesguilds.com slash content dash journey. This is a mirror board that we set up that you can completely copy for yourself for free. Just join the community. So story is the one part, but there's more. Your lead magnets, they can't be boring. If your lead magnets are boring, they will simply not interact with it. And therefore they will not like engage and convert and give you their contact data. So what I encouraged you a couple of events ago was to really think about different types of interactive lead magnets that you can do today without writing any line of code. That would be uh, ideas like having a survey going up, like a quiz, a personality, a knowledge test, a situation test, from how sustainable is your logistics to what is your life quote. Yeah, on, on that whole B2C to B2B range, you can create more engagement lead magnets now easier than ever. I showed a couple of tools. The one I'm currently most uh, mostly using is outgrow.co or involve me. And, and they help you create this kind of calculators, competitions, all that stuff where you sometimes ask yourself, like, can I actually afford to build something like that? With tools like those, no problem anymore. But what cannot happen <laughs> is that people are actually bored by that. Yeah, and I, I show on this chart, I show a couple of, of tools here, like Outgrow, Kickoff Labs, Involve Me, uh, and give some examples on the right-hand side of interactive lead ma magnets that really performed well. Now you can grab all of that at piratesguilds.com slash interactive. As I said, I'm gonna drop a lot of links. So tools is now a nice part, nice segue to, to the next part. So the first thing I said, your lead magnet needs to be on point, needs to drive the value story, can't be boring. No, no, what else? We love to talk about tools here at Pirate Skills. You guys do that as well. The, the growth tool stack meetup was well received. And what we did there was essentially show you a setup that completes all the stuff you need. Yeah, to, to create great content, to show it on a website, to collect emails or messenger subscribers and to nurture them and to sell to those people. And the stack I showed you here was my own stack but you can apply it to your own situation. But the categories are the ones that you should focus on. And if you feel that your tech is currently slowing you down, your lead generation efforts cannot be at the max. 
Imagine this. You're trying to build new content, new designs, new posters, new infographics, new articles that serve as lead generators. And it takes you three weeks to generate this. Like, ah, don't. It's, it just takes too long. Today we live in a world where graphics can be done by anybody and empowered by a Canva. You can write good text with Grammarly. You, you have stuff like the Adobe Creative Suite where you can create amazing podcasts and videos and animations as you like. And then you, you become really fast at content creation because you don't only really want to have one lead magnet. Lead magnets, yeah, it was plural. We don't want to rely on one piece to learn and explore what our customer really likes. Another piece you need for lead generation is your website. Like I use WordPress, you might use Webflow or like your Shopify store or HubSpot. Whatever works for you is fine. But what you need is something where you can build a landing page in less than a day. Yeah, if you need more than a day, difficult. Now, once people have interacted with your lead magnet and they land on your landing page and you captured the email address, they need to land somewhere. This central hub is the CRM, usually your email tool, something like the low end, like your MailChimp, on the high end, your HubSpot, and in between your, your active campaign, your sent and blues, that kind of stuff. I chose active campaign. It's truly the central source of truth. It's where you want to save all of the information. That person came in from that lead magnet, from that Facebook ads campaign or that LinkedIn audience, and you save all of that and then you can watch what happens. Now, usually in sales, people go through a pipeline. They might be a lead first, then they are a marketing qualified lead, sales qualified lead, then they become a customer. And then you can, can estimate like how much revenue you're gonna make with that person. And you need to be able in one place to tell like this is where they came from, this is what happened to them, this is the cost, this is the revenue. This is what should be happening in your CRM supported by some analytics tools, which is on the right-hand side. I think the most important tool that misses on this list is just great Google spreadsheets or Excel spreadsheets. You don't need a fancy analytics setup, that just happens to be mine. I have everything in Google Tag Manager, so I can, for example, in analytics, see where did people click? on my lead magnet. Which call to action did they press? What did they do on my website? I can put an A-B test on my website to see, should I create a very long form uh, landing page or should I make a very compact landing page? Where do people convert at a cheaper costs and result into higher value customers? And I manage, manage stuff like cookie consent with ball apps because analytics and data privacy just come together. I tell you, if you want to try a new tool and you need again four weeks to go through your data privacy guys it's, it's not doing it yeah yeah it's, it can be done this way but this is not lead generation at scale lead generation is, at scale is dude tomorrow i want to test linkedin uh, lead ads what do we need to do okay put this into your data privacy put this in your cookie consent banner blah 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 that's where things how things need to happen not being slowed down by this. Now, the last part, like managing leads. If leads do not get processed in your pipeline properly, you could just as well not collect any leads. One of the teams I worked with, they just got way too many leads than they could handle, and the cost way outgrew the revenue they could make. And and this was such a painful situation to watch because lead gen was working at scale, not at the appropriate scale. I'm, I'm not a guy that wants growth for growth's sake. I want the right amount of growth, as much growth as you can handle. So you want the, the, the management process here uh, really, really figured out if you, if you start scaling up. And, and scaling up, in my mind, happens when you move from, let's say, 10 leads per month to the 10x factor, 100 leads. If you start from 1,000 leads per month and you would try to enter the 10,000s. What you want in that situation, when you scale up operation, 
is automation. You cannot handle every single bit of that process anymore. And the tools that help me a lot are Integromat and Zapier. Zapier also has a very beautiful thing that is called Lead Score by Zapier. Let me write that down. Lead Score by Zapier. It's actually built on a very expensive, like one to 2,000 euro per month is where the starts software called Mad Kudu. And Zapier gets you a limited free integration with Mad Kudu. And all of my lead scoring, at least a part of that, is being done through Zapier. I just, I just love it. For everything else, I prefer Integromat. This is the tool chain. If you want to get deeper into that, go to piratesguilds.com slash tools, check that out, and use that board. Use those categories to put in your tools and make huge ass exclamation marks of them when they are making you slow, when you have a problem in that process. That leads us to the next part. We got the lead magnets that are amazing now, interactive, not boring, that really drive value. We're able to capture them, the leads, in a tool stack that helps us to create faster lead magnets, put them on a landing page, now we got the contact data. Now we need to nurture them. Lead nurturing is so underrated. It's, it's, it's incredible. I, I, I most often hear like, okay, lead generation at our place is, is too expensive. What are you doing with the leads? I'm asking that. And then they're telling me, yeah, like nothing. Yeah, like they, they, they just don't buy. They get two emails from us and that is it. And they don't buy. Well, of course they don't buy. They buy. When you earn the trust, like you can ask yourself, like, is the problem where my, where my leads actually do not convert to sales, then it's usually a trust problem. If people were to trust you, they would give you any amount because they would believe that you can make them more impact in their business than the costs yeah, of your product or service but we need to build and we need to earn that trust over time. This is why we set up those six core lead nurturing tactics from starting with a personalized welcome. I see people, especially the MailChimp crowd, um, they have maybe two or three lead magnets uh, up and running, but they all get the same double up in email. They all get the same uh, welcome email. And I'm like, why thou? If, if you promise somebody a, a poster to become an enterprise architect, yeah, like, so this is the perfect enterprise architect uh, poster. And you ask them for the content uh, confirmation uh, of the email address because you don't want to spam them. You want to be GDPR friendly and everything. And, and people are not seeing you have to confirm this email because you opted in for the amazing enterprise architect poster less a uh, lower percentage of people is actually going to say, yes, this actually is my email address. And if the follow-up sequence after that is not aligned with the value and the story that you have driven through that lead magnet, people are just going to disconnect, unsubscribe, they're gone. Then after they got a certain personalized email experience, yeah, this is this, is this part here, one, they should be getting evergreen series. I would say if two out of a hundred leads convert in a B2B environment, that's pretty much good enough. With B2C, I have seen as much as 25%, and I would say I would aim for 5% at the lowest. If you're at a very large scale, let's say you're actually collecting a thousand per day, I would be fine with less, like two to five percent. But below that is not acceptable, but five to 10% of people who you are collecting email addresses from should over a certain period of time convert to customers. B2B is totally fine if two out of 100 people convert. I personally, I could not handle more than two new customers coming in a month. That would totally blow up my business. Yeah, which I don't want. So what needs to happen is that the 98% that are not converting yet that they just keep on hearing from you. Yeah, they should be in an evergreen sequence that shows you not just the standard newsletter, but actually the best other content that you have built for that audience. So I'm sure you have generated more than one lead magnet. 
So why not send them lead magnet two, three, four, five, six, when you just send them the first one? That will increase the trust and they will more likely convert to customers. Then of course you can score them as we just talked about with tools like Zapier, lead scoring. And then what you can do is not write everybody the same message. You can, you can personalize that. You can really show people, oh yeah, I understand you have different needs. You seem to be a startup. You, you need a different kind of service than this innovation company here that is uh, sitting in a big corporate. And this is what segmentation and personalization means. Then the value ladder, I think this might be the most important part. If your lead generation is too expensive, your value creation is too weak. If, even if your leads cost you 100 euro to generate, all you need to create and to sell to every 10th person is something that leaves you a margin of 1,000 euro. And if you don't have that, you need to think about what can I actually create to increase the value of the average customer? Let's say you usually sell something for around 100 euro. You need to ask yourself, what is a 500, what is a 5,000 euro product that the high end of my customer base would appreciate? And your average order value rises and suddenly cost per lead can go naturally and you can more easily scale. And of course you want to split test and experiment all of the good stuff. You can go in depth with that. This is just a detailed view that I wanted to show you as a preview. If you go to piratesgoods.com slash tactics, this is what, what you get. This is the detailed poster that you can download there. And please, as always, make this your own. All right. Now we got a nice nurturing campaign going on. Now we get to the next part, tracking. Are your leads being tracked right? The essential question that everybody's asking, like, is this lead generation stuff worth it? We're spending 2,000 euro per month on lead generation, on LinkedIn, on Facebook uh, lead ads. Is it worth it? Answering that simple question. The, no, the, the ability to answer that question, that is what enables you to have one of the components of scale ready. And what you want to know is you want to be able to track the cost to a certain group of leads. Yeah, it doesn't need to be attached to a single lead, but hey, from this campaign that cost me a thousand euro, you can measure the cost. Yeah, we go into that example uh, that we built at the lead tracking guide a couple of weeks ago with Lilith yeah, from Visual Makers. Really great video with her. She gave us so many insights into this and we built this together. And I hope this is going to be super valuable. So cost is one aspect. How much did the campaign cost? And on the other side, how long did it take to get revenue and how much revenue did we get? So you understand what is the relationship between cost and revenue. So let's zoom in here. First of all, at the top, we have a campaign. Yeah, we just, we just spent 6,000 euro. Let's assume these are Facebook lead ads. Yeah, so those are the kind of ads that you can see on Facebook and Instagram, where you click on them and there's a pre-filled form that you just have to submit and you get your thing. The advantage of that is very low friction, get less fake data because it's pre-filled data and people are too lazy to actually put in the fake email address. Um, but the disadvantages may be people do not have enough context. They get less information around the whole lead magnet, for example, as they could be having on a landing page. Yeah, And you can also not retarget them on different channels. But let's say we do a nice lead generation campaign, spend 6,000 euro. Now, I get roughly over a thousand leads, which leads to a five euro 58 cost per lead. Now, this might be good, this might be bad. As I said, I've, I've seen 50 cent leads being generated at scale, and I've seen highly profitable 500 euro leads. Just depends how high the customer lifetime value is in your value ladder. Now, at, you, you need to have a certain time frame. I usually looking at a 30 day to six month time frame. 
in, in which you want to convert people to customers. So in this case, we have 150 customers. That gives us roughly 40 euro cost per customer, and they make 60,000 euro in revenue. That sounds fun. But as you can see in the table below, that you want to be able to not just put this up as an aggregated number, like, oh great, my cost per lead is five euro 50. Now, is that good or is that bad? That, that completely depends on how good is your current benchmark. What is your average that you're having? Are you profitable overall? Do you maybe have a certain threshold that you need to hit or need to stay below a certain cost in order to make this viable? You need to define that for yourself. And how I define it is I look at the costs of the goods sold. Yeah, if you shift to the right, you can also see that if I sell something, if I have my 150 customers, they also gonna cost me something. Yeah, I maybe have to ship something. I have to send a professional to, to do the work. I personally have maybe to do the work and I can charge a certain uh, amount of euro per hour for that or for the, for the result. And these costs can be factored in. You can completely ignore them. I prefer to factor them in because then I can have my, my revenue subtracted by ad revenue and the cost of goods sold. And that leaves me the nice net profit. Yeah, this is the key number. How much profit did you already make from your lead generation efforts? And if that number is negative, first, you have not converted enough people, yes, or your cost is simply too high in your cost per acquisition. And you can express that in, in ROAS, which includes just the, the costs and the, the revenue, ad spend and the revenue. But if you also want to include the cost of goods sold, you can express that as, as return of investment. If your return of investment is positive, then you can actually scale your lead generation. If you're not, if you're spending a thousand euro and you're just making 800 back, you are not profitable yet. But let me tell you a secret. If you're spending a thousand euro and you are just making 1000 euro back, but you have collected a hundred leads on the way, it is amazing because even though you just made your, your money back and maybe just 10 out of those people became customers and bought something for 100 euro, or a single person became a customer and bought something for 1,000 euro, you just got 1,000 euro free ad spend. So this just needs to be at zero. It, it needs to be bigger than zero. It doesn't need to be 400%. And this is what lots of people are not getting. But again, we do not want to fall into the fallacy of looking at just aggregated numbers. We want to be able, as marketers, we should have uh, that kind of um, demand on ourselves that we are able to break this down to our campaigns. Like, was this from Facebook? Was this from Google? Was this from SEO? How much uh, cost was associated with that campaign? And how much revenue did that make? And then you can see, if you look at those numbers down here, that there are winners and losers. For example, here, I netted a net profit of negative 200 and 100, negative 200 euro, negative 100%. But this campaign here looks already like fun. I netted a profit of 1,296 euro and 300% return of investment. And there are even more profitable campaigns. Wow, look at this one. So what you want to find is the ones that are dragging you down and the ones that are pulling you up. You need to do more with the campaigns that pull you up, that have a high return of investment, and you need to scale down the ones that are dragging you down. This is how you go from the analytics point of view to that. Of course, this is just bean counting. You actually have to have a significant number of beans worth being counted. Everything else I talked before is about creating more beans to count. But the magic of analytics, of being able to actually see, is that, that you don't have to look at the averages anymore. You can see specifically, wow, this is a winner. This is a winner. Let's build on those. 
you can build a complete business one functioning lead generation funnel. Is it risky? Yes, of course. Should you diversify? Yes, of course. But the main challenge is to get past that point where lead generation is actually a cost for you. It needs to turn into an investment, a trackable, clear investment. This is what lead tracking is about. This is what's holding back a lot of people. This is why I encourage you to go to piratesgoods.com slash lead tracking. And fundamentally, this is just a Google Sheet powered by Integromat. And those fancy graphs, they are just from a Data Studio. They could have just worked as well in the spreadsheet. I just put them up there because it gives my mind something easy to scan. While a big ass table makes it hard for me to filter the information. I want to make it easy for myself and the colleagues I'm working with to see which campaigns are converting how well. So ask yourself, how good can you track the cost, your revenue, and are you actually having a good ROI? If not, you need to work on that. And analytics can tell you where to look for it. Now to the last part of this fun party, the traffic sources that drive the lead generation. You have a great funnel, great lead magnet. They're being nurtured well. They're buying stuff. You can track it. Now what do you want to do? You want to crank up the volume. And for that, you need to push more traffic into those lead generation funnels. What you need here is not boring ads. We have one meetup that we call the, the social media ads showroom. And this is where we showed you how you can use different formats of ads in different placements and how to convert them from one format to the other. For example, you have a normal static image. You use Canva to convert that into a video. You can use a couple of those videos in sequence to create like a carousel. You get more engagement and you can experiment with the different formats for your different audiences. And the social ads showroom, the fundamental question behind that is, do you have ads that actually convert? Do you have the, the copy, the promise, the, the design, the delivery that you can multiply across many channels? And talking about channels, that is the traffic channel compass, the, the last link I'm going to share with you today, I hope. Piratesgoods.com slash compass. This shows you how you can prioritize your own channel. Well, let me, let, me, let me zoom in. The first type of channel that you should focus on are your own audiences. Focus on the lead nurturing first. They always say like work from the bottom of the funnel upwards towards colder and colder audience. Do you already have everything that you need to close people? Do you have enough to nurture them? Do you have the content to get them in there at the top? Then you have other people's audiences, like your social media channels, your LinkedIn, your YouTube, Google SEO traffic. This is all traffic sources that you don't own, but that you can influence. So they can give you something, but somebody else can take it away from you. Yeah, they're not completely your own. You can also decide that you prefer like to pay a computer. Uh, like an ad server, like Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, Google ads, to scale your message to a million people and to see who's going to buy it. Or you can pay a human and you can make influencer contracts. You can have an affiliate program. You can sponsor events. You can do all kinds of stuff. The Pirate Skills traffic channel compass gives you like this overview of what you can do to drive more traffic. And once you have a single channel working, let's say you're having great experience with Instagram ads or with LinkedIn ads, you should scale that and focus that, but also start experimenting. Like, hmm, what about, okay, if you're already on Google ads, maybe you wanna add YouTube ads to that. If you are on Facebook ads, you wanna add uh, Instagram and Pinterest to that because they are very aligned. If you and I have LinkedIn ads, if you're in Germany, for example, you might want to add Xing ads. Dude, I just said that. You want to really give yourself more breadth 
and rely on a multiple number of, of campaigns that support your lead generation efforts. And, and the reason for that is that I've seen a lot of businesses that had something really great working and the platform decided that they don't like them anymore. They cut off the Facebook ads channel. They shut down the YouTube channel. That's it's such an annoying place to be in when you really build and trust it on something and then somebody else takes it away. Yeah, this is why I started with your own channels, like your own email list that nobody can steal from you. Even if your email provider doesn't like, you can just go to another one. And yeah, that, that's just something I, I really like to focus on when once I have started to stabilize my lead generation base and I try to expand to more channels on the same lead magnets. Now, those are the five big parts. Now think about that initial question again. Like how, after you have seen that, how would you score yourself? On a scale from one to 10, how good are your lead magnets? How good are the tools that you're using? How well do you nurture your leads and convert them to sales? How well can you track costs and revenues? How well can you scale the traffic campaigns? And this is the circle that you need to fill out yeah, in order to make lead generation work. The solutions are pretty unique to your use case, but I hope the example that I've given to you and the frameworks that we built up in the past half year and beyond that um, are giving you inspiration to get you into a better place. Maybe you're deciding, okay, my, my traffic sucks. That's level three out of 10. And just ask yourself, how can I get to be a five? Uh, okay, I can, I can think about a more, maybe a different traffic channel and I cannot have boring ads anymore. Okay, I can, I can work on those two concrete problems. Yeah, take it like that and go back to the inspiration from the past slides. If you like this stuff, then go ahead, download it at piratesguilds.com slash scale dash leads. As always, we just give it to you. You just have to put in your, your first name and an email address. And then you don't only get access to this stuff. You actually get free access without any further registration to, to everything that we have done at Pirates Guilds in the past years. Yeah, it's, it has become like this treasure trove of, of stuff. Let me Let me show you. Here is our journey overview. You can reach it always in the navigation. And in here you can see that we have those bundles. These last six ones, they are all, the diabolical plan was what is the perfect number of topics that I need, not the number of topics, but the perfect topics I need to explain lead generation at scale. And this culminated from July, August to today, to this lead generation thing at the end of the year. And I'm super excited to see what's happening next and next year. We spend time to build tools for the most frequently asked questions that we have in the works, like Ben, which channel should I focus on? Ben, how do I set up A-B testing? Like this kind of stuff. Before that, we talked about e-commerce in a sequence. If you access any one of these, for free, you get access to all of the rest. It's like an e-learning system here. I hope you enjoy this. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn if you want to talk about any of that kind of stuff or if you have cool case studies that we can show here at Pirate Skills and share with this community. I would love to hear from you. So just connect with me, send me a message. Uh, don't just follow me, connect with me really on LinkedIn. That would be wonderful. That's the main part. Yeah, lead generation at scale. I hope you can really now maximize your lead generation efforts. That's it from me tonight. I hope you had as much fun as I did. And I see you on January 5th. And I hope for a lot of LinkedIn message between that. Bye-bye.